Hello everybody, welcome back. Welcome back to the start of the new year. Uh, I know I haven't posted any videos in a while and that's because I've been busy doing a little bit of KonMari. And when I got to the paper part of the KonMari method, I found these old sketches from back when I was in high school. A uh, really long time. It just kind of goes to show what a hoarder I am that I still have things from ninth grade. But these are sort of the beginning of me drawing, really. Um, um, yeah, they're just a blast from the past, really. And what I thought was interesting about them and what I'm, why I'm sharing them is that uh, they're really exploring with different subjects and different things like household objects um, to learn more about you know, shading and achieving value so you can get a realistic 3D effect in your drawings. Um, yeah, so this is, this is, these are things that, like for example, this little girl was something that I saw in a Macy's catalog for Christmas and I thought, hey, um, I'm gonna just try to draw her. So it just goes to show, the show that you don't have to necessarily lay out a still life for yourself you, it could be just spur of the moment you see a picture in a magazine just take it and start drawing it uh, and just do a little sketch uh, it, it can be spontaneous it, you don't have to think too much about what you're going to draw and how you're going to draw it anything around your house can be a drawing subject like these um these flowers these carnations that i had around the house um i think we're we're getting a little bit into the later stages of my drawing here, uh, which doesn't, it doesn't show it, I know. Um, and what's great about these images is that, you know, this was done when I was in my first year of college. It's kind of like a visual history of where I've been. It's a diary, if you will, because I can remember everything about what I was thinking and feeling when I did them. Um, so in that spirit, I thought I might um, kind of pick up on where I left off there. I had this vision when I was in high school that, you know, to really master drawing, I uh, would sort of play with a lot of different subjects and textures, and I thought the plan had been to just do random objects, um, and fruit and flower, cause those are flowers, because those are kind of what everybody starts with. And just explore like clear, uh, clear things, glass, water, that kind of stuff, fabrics, because those have their own texture um, that you should explore, and then furs and and smooth and rough textures. So um, you know, doing still lives, exploring those things, and then progressing. For example, once you once you understand how to do rough materials or, or textures then you could look at fur and do animals um, and that requires a lot of not just exploring the texture and the values behind what you're doing but also um, looking at the proportions of the animals that you're drawing and that, that can get difficult if you're not just staring at an animal straight on you're looking at it from the side um, so the, the different viewpoints that you look at something in will make it more or less challenging because um, of how you should be playing with the 2d image to achieve that 3d effect um, and then another another thing that you might want to look at when you're if you're trying to achieve mastery in drawing is not just proportion but also perspective uh, which is what i was getting at with the looking at the animals from different viewpoints it's looking at a landscape for example and and looking down a street you're getting three point pers 3d perspective in that because you're looking into the distance so there's objects that are close to you there's objects that are far away from you and there's a real the, there's a real art and uh, a knowledge that has to come with drawing things in perspective like that so the goal for this sketchbook for this year 2019 
is to start small with the still lifes that I described, household objects, fruit, flower, and explore value first. So we're not necessarily focusing on the proportions of what we're drawing, though that's important. Um, we're just trying to understand how to achieve that 3D effect through value. And once we've mastered value, then we can move on to doing more advanced things like um, looking at animals and faces and figures and actually drawing them proportionally. Um, so I'm going to explore how to get better at drawing proportionally and also adding that layer of value into your drawing. So accurately, accurately proportional drawings with the right values attached to them. And um, then maybe we can venture out into some landscapes and cityscapes so that we can master value proportion and that 3D perspective that I was talking about earlier. So if that sounds like that's something that's interesting to you, then follow me along because this year uh, we're going to be spending one month on each one of those different subjects. So I thought it was appropriate to start off the series with a throwback since I started drawing with the keys, I thought I'd revisit that subject here. Okay, so a small note on the supplies that I'm using here, they're not very expensive supplies because I'm just starting out and maybe you are too, so you don't have to break the bank to start off drawing. I bought the sketch pad at Michael's for $5 and I bought the... Um, the pencils for $5 as well. They're an artist loft set and they have a variety of different pencils uh, in them. And uh, what I mean by that is that the pencils have different lead hardness. So you start off from 4H and then you have 2H pencils, an H pencil, HB, B, 2B, 4B, 6B, and 8B. And what that refers to is what kind of mark the pencil will leave on the paper. So I haven't shown it in this video, but in the very beginning of the notepad, what I've done is made myself a couple of swatches, um, basically testing every single pencil in the set to see what kind of mark they're going to leave behind on the paper. So the 4H and the 2H and the H leave very light marks on the paper. Uh, that's in fact what I am outlining uh, here. Um, the pencils that I'm using to outline the keys here are the 2H and the H pencils, whereas the um, Bs, 2Bs, 4Bs, 6Bs, and 8Bs, those will go up in darkness. Um, so you're going to leave a darker mark on the paper when you're using the Bs uh, as you go up the number scale, with 8B being the darkest mark that you're going to leave on the paper. So the shadows that I'm putting in here, I'm putting in with either um, 6B or uh, a 4B and then I'll go back in later and deepen those shadows with the 8B. So for this particular drawing, I ended up not having to use every pencil within the set. Um, and that's because the angle that I'm looking at the keys is different than the one that the camera is picking up on. And actually from the angle that I was viewing this, the light was shining directly on the face of the keys. And that was the dark, the lightest portion of my drawing. Um, so because I had such a strong light, there was a strong level of contrast between the shadows and the lights in, in my viewpoint. And the way to create the illusion that you're drawing a 3D object on a 2D piece of paper is um, by having the lightest lights next to the darkest darks. And that's going to create that contrast that's making the key look like a 3D object rather than a 2D drawing. 
So what I ended up using for this was just the um, 2H pencil for the top of the keys, which is for me the lightest part of the key. And as I mentioned before, with the shadows, I will use um, different gradients. Starting with the 4, 4B, then going back in and doing the 6B, and then finally uh, going back in with the darkest pencil, which is the 8B. I'm going to try to take a picture of the object from the point of view that I'm drawing it and attaching it in the upper right hand corner for you guys in future videos. I just haven't figured out how to work that in my editing software yet, so that that's something that I will do in the future so that you guys can follow along and we can do it this together. Okay guys, so as we're coming down to the end of this video, I just wanted to say thanks for watching. If you like this kind of content and you'd like to see more, please hit the subscribe button below. New videos are going to be uploaded every Friday and Sunday night. And if there's anything that you'd like to see me draw next, leave me a message in the comment box below and it could be the subject of a future video. Folks, thanks for joining me, and good night.